Hi there, and a very warm welcome to Season 3, Episode 23 of People Soup. It's Ross McIntosh here. Pea Supers, thanks so much for tuning in. We are living in extraordinary times. And I'd like to start with a tweet from Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, who is the Director General of the World Health Organization. And he said, Compassion is a medicine. Supporting other people in your community can help you as much as it does them. Check in on neighbours, family and friends. Hashtag healthy at home. And we can extend that compassion to ourselves. This is really a time to recognise what connects us, our common humanity. Today's episode is called ABC with our big G. It shares a brief evidence-based theory with some practical examples of its application from my dad, otherwise known as Big G. And I'd love it if P-Supers would also share their ideas and experiences of autonomy, belonging and competence. And I can add them to the show notes for this episode as I receive them. People Soup is a community of people who are interested in behavioural science at work and how we can make it accessible, fun and useful for ourselves and each other. At work, behavioural science has the capacity to enhance our well-being help us be the person we want to be more often, and provide us with perspectives to enable cooperation, collaboration and innovation. It was psychologist Abraham Maslow who said, a first-rate soup is more creative than a second-rate painting. And that was the inspiration for this podcast. More than ever, the world of work is a heady mix of people, behaviour, events and challenges. None more so than the challenges we're all facing right now. When the blend is right, it can be first-rate. Behavioural science and psychology has a lot to offer in terms of recipes, ingredients, seasoning, spices and utensils. So welcome to People Soup, where we aim to nourish the mind and flourish at work. Let's go on to news and reviews. In our last episode was part two of my chat with the wonderful Dr Ian Tendall. And we really delved into the breadth and detail of his research Thank you to all the people who listened and shared and commented. One review in from Dr. Shane McLaughlin, who said, Part two of the People Soup podcast where Ross interviews Ian. Give it a listen. Really proud to have been Ian's PhD student. A great example of how to do high-level, critical research while always being humble and compassionate. And that review from Shane really does sum up how Ian approaches his work. In this extraordinary developing new context, I've been reflecting on the values of this podcast. And I reckon there are three now that are really uppermost for me on this platform, which are compassion, connection and collaboration. Kind of if you like, I can see the next episodes being the three C's chronicles. Those three C's of compassion, connection and collaboration. My idea is to continue to share evidence-based advice and tips from a wide variety of sources, more guests, short episodes, longer ones, with a focus on expressing those three C's in our values. Watch this space as the ideas develop, and if you have an idea yourself and would like to get involved, please do get in touch at peoplesoup.pod at gmail.com. If you do enjoy the podcast, I'd love it if you would subscribe, rate and review it, whatever platform you're on. It helps us reach more people with stuff that could be useful. For now, get a brew on and have a listen to ABC with our big G. ABC refers to autonomy, belonging and competence, which are some fundamental psychological needs. So let's go through each one in turn and I'll get some examples of what big G has been up to. Firstly, some context. Big G, my dad, is currently in physical isolation in a village in Northumberland in the northeast of England. He lives alone since my dear mum, known as Little A, passed away last year after they had over 60 years together. He's been going through his own grieving process since mum died, as we all have, and this weekend, me and my sister Ali were planning to be with him for mum's birthday and mother's day. We're not there. We want to try and keep him healthy. And that was a difficult decision which got easier as the magnitude of what we're facing became apparent. It was a true act of love, not actually being there with him. So let's go through the A, B and C and see what Big G thinks. I 
I've tried now just calling you from the landline, you'll see. Yeah. And putting you on speaker. Uh huh. And that's working all right. So, so let's have a little chat if that's all right. Yes, yes. So, welcome. Welcome to my podcast, Dad. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. Nice to share it with you. No worries. So, you know, I was talking about that, that theory. There's a psychological theory that talks about the ABC. ABC, yes. Of, of well-being. And so I'm calling this episode the ABC with our big G. Yes. Because I think you're role-modelling some really important stuff for us all in these really unusual, extraordinary times. I'll see, yeah. Yeah. So there's one. I'm going to go through each one and then just chat about them very briefly. So there's one called Autonomy. And I've got a little definition of that. So do we have control over what we do? How do you have control over what we do in these unusual times? It could be our schedule. It could be what we actually do and getting some yeah. routine. Well, I, I listened to Dame, the Dame, Dame Joan. I've forgotten the surname. Bakewell, is it? She said, make a schedule. Oh. the birds. Things like that. Do some exercises. You know, go out into the garden. Read. Even if you just read one page a day to build up, start reading. And just, just in, in essence, keep yourself busy, which is what I've tried to do. Okay, so so what's a typical day for you now in in this physical isolation? Well, I I generally get up at seven o'clock, come down, make a cup of tea, and then do my exercises. I have got some sort of warm up exercises I've done for a long time. Yeah, but I've also got some exercises that the physio gave me because I've I'm troubled with my hips, so it was all about getting my my lower body mobile. So I do those in the study. Uh, okay. And, and I've even got down in the study, you laugh at this, um, some of my exercise equipment that I used when I was much younger. For my 21st birthday, yeah. I bro my brother bought me some Indian clubs. Can you remember? Oh, they're, they're beautiful, the wooden things that you... Yes. Bloody hell, man. Are you swinging them round your head in the morning? <laughs> I, I, no, but I've got them down to do, do just that. So I think I'd, I would better do those in the garden. Yeah, well... In case I leave go. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe just start with some light swinging of them, perhaps. Yes, yes. And I also brought my chest expanders down. Oh, man, I used to use them. I know, I know. That didn't work very well, mind. But they're the ones no, with the... I haven't done those yet. I just do physical lying on my back, generally moving my hips, those sort of exercises. So, so they're the ones with the, the chest expanders or the ones with the red wooden handles? No, I, no, I seem to... No, the, the metal handles. Oh. I don't know where the red ones went to. Yeah, that's, that's odd, isn't it? Yeah. I think they've gone the same way as the little basket you used to ride in. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> so you're feeling you, you've got, inspired by Dame Joan Bakewell, you've got some control over what you do. You've got yourself yes, a routine. Yes, I, I have. I thought that was very inspiring. Well. I, I immediately set about writing things down because I've, I've recently heard from my, uh, I'll say, family member in Ottawa. Oh, yeah. Who's trying, to, who's trying to persuade me to have more DNA work done. And also, um, she said, if I send her my virtually password to get into my site, she'll have a look at my DNA and perhaps help me with it. Oh, blum and heck, Dad. I'm a bit worried about giving people passwords. Oh, no, but it's just it's about... Uh, uh, I reckon it's genuine. Okay, okay, well... And there's also, listen, there's also... Tr you've, you've heard of the Centre for Life? 
I have, yes. Because I used to take Alistair and Andrew. We used, Anna and I used to take Alistair and Andrew there. Yeah. And they loved it. And I, I went to a DNA talk there once, quite recently. And after it, I said, do any of you explain DNA to people who's had it for, for their test results? Mm. And she said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually emailed them, and they put me on to the university. Right. And the university put me on to, and I'm reading from a, a file that I've got, Future Learn Support. Okay. Now, I haven't taken it up yet, but it, it sounds to me like Open University. Okay. Because it says, genealogy, researching your family tree, a c more courses about genetics. No, that, yeah, that, was, that would be the one that I try. So all I have to do is click on right. genealogy, researching your family tree, and I reckon I get a, you know, I get some something to read or to write, read up about or something. So I'm going to try that sometime. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask if any of our listeners, Dad, if any of them might be able to send us resources, uh, really accessible, understandable resources on DNA and family trees that they might be able to point us yes, to to yes. see if there's anything else. Yeah, that would be good. So, So going back to... Autonomy, where you feel like you've got some sense of control. Oh yes, I do, um, because of, because of the the things uh, I've listed, you know. Brilliant. I haven't. I've not formally. Um, I've just jotted things down for my list, so uh -huh. it's not like a proper schedule yet. I mean, there's things like the garden, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I've, and I brought the bird feeders near the home, near the house. Ah, oh, right, so you can... Down at the bottom of the garden, and now I can sit here and see the birds feed, which I think is a, is a good thing. Brilliant. Yeah. Love it. Thanks, Dad. So the B of the ABC, big G, is belonging. And this is the idea that we, we should try and keep socially connected and get ourselves integrated into groups. Yes, yes. So I know you were going to lots of things before yes. you had to go into isolation, so that's a bit of a change for you. It is. It's, it's, you know, yes, it's, it's a, a great change, because I used to volunteer at the hospice shop. Yeah. Where I was a backroom boy, steam, steaming clothes. Brilliant. <laughs> putting those silly plastic labels on. Yeah. Uh, and and we, I, t I think I told you we had a a celebratory night out at a pizza place. That's right, your first pizza. My first pizza, and they were all lovely people. Of course, I just meet the people that, that I'm on with on a Thursday Thursday morning. So I I met all the other days volunteers, and they were a nice group of people. And yeah. I, me, like I do, used to do for the Thursday Club for Mum, I took photos of them all. Ah, lovely. And I've delivered photos to them all. So, uh -huh. you know, so what's, it, what's it like now, want, Dad? I'll print them. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Dad. What's, yeah. what's it like now, the, 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 the new ways of connecting? Because we're connecting, you, me and Ali are connecting on telephone and also Facebook Messenger video call. That's a new thing. That's a new thing. Yeah. Also, I've also had one for Rebecca, your friend here. Ah, P. Supers. Rebecca is someone who I went to school, school with. with, but from nursery school, right till yes. right till high. Remember, you used to study here because her, her house was so full of other children. Yeah, Rebecca was one of one of many. Yes. <laughs> and, and now, now that's multiplied by. Jim, Jim, the dad has a whole host of grandchildren. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, so, and, and Rachel brings them in from time to time, or used to when she could. Yeah, I know. I know Rebecca pops in quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, so what else? I heard there was something in the village, Dad. Some yeah, sort there's, of there's a there's a. I 
mean, R- Rachel and Jen. Jen is Rebecca. It's Rebecca, Dad. Oh, sorry, Rebecca. Rebecca and her sister have, have have circulated a form, which, if I'm lucky, I could find it. Oh, don't worry. But I think that form was to get help with um. Yes, with shopping. shopping with with collecting prescriptions, all sorts of things like that. Oh, that's brilliant! And it's an initiative started by by Je- by Re- Rebecca and, and Jane sisters. Fantastic! They're but, very public spirited. You know, they're both school teachers, and they can't, can't obviously teach at the moment. So, so yes. Right, and and what about? Tell me about your window, the kitchen window, which overlooks oh. uh, some other houses and and the oh. road. Well, I found on Facebook that this person had, for some reason, decorated a kitchen window for passing children just to give them some interest to, and it was a huge, like, rainbow effect. Right. And I, and I, I clicked on and I said I liked it, and my answer to that is um, I have a big wire video storage tower Right. in it, I put in lots of mum's soft toys and I've, st- I've stood that in the kitchen window complete with some Union Jacks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is, sounds crazy, but at least it'll get people to stop and look. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're, you're uh, presenting some art in the window, if you like. Oh, that's or right. Some that's- entertainment. And, and I hear there's a rainbow on the way, is that right? That's right. Uh, th- this original lady has a rainbow in the window, and uh, Rebecca's children, Daisy and Lily, are going to bring me a rainbow to put in my window. Oh, fantastic. That'll complete my artwork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I know I know a couple of, a couple of other neighbours, Dad, have been or popped a note round to ask about shopping and stuff, so that's yeah. lovely. That's lovely. Which is very nice. I mean, yes, I'm on my own, and I've actually got a lot of shopping in, but it's very kind that people take the bother to yeah. ask if they can help. And mm. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, it's and lovely. A nice, nice neighbourhood spirit. Yeah. Right, the, the final one, Big G, is the letter C, and that's called competence. Competence. Yeah, which means... We are effective in our efforts. We develop skills or we gain knowledge. Yes, yes. And you've, also, you've already talked about DNA and family tree. Yeah. But I know you've started reading that book on... I know, Northumberland. Yeah. I haven't got very far much into it, but uh, yes, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to continue that. And, and was... I like watching videos, particularly Alice Roberts on the origins of of us all. Ah, right. I, I like I like going through that one. I've watched it before, but I'll I'll watch it again. And I like uh, watching oh the guy who who talks ab- about the ring of Brodgar up on Orkney. Oh, blimey. I don't know who that is. Oh, yes, it's a ring of standing stones and we were there in Orkney. When the, the, the were discovering a site, a Neolithic site, not far from where we were staying. Right. And actually, we went there and had a, a conductor tour. Ah, okay. A site as to what they were finding on this little small isthmus, I think if we call it, a little stretch of land with locks on both sides. Uh, and, it, and it's now developed in quite a famous Neolithic site. And the, act, the, the theory is at the moment that this site started the whole... So this site spread, don't ask me how, over the Pentland Firth and into the rest of Scotland and England. Uh, you know, because when you talk about Stonehenge, right. people who built Stonehenge and they had the the celebrations, their meals, their group barbecues, if you like. 
Uh huh. Some of the cattle had come from Orkney. Oh, blimey. I believe that they had herded their cattle all the way down to, to Stonehenge for celebrations. Now, how, did, how on earth did the message get back up to Orkney to come down to Stonehenge? You know, what, what prompted that, that visit? Blimey, man, I have no idea. It wasn't an email, that's for that's sure. That's deep, that's deep. <laughs> yeah. But is it, is it that fellow with the longish hair that does the I Scottish... Oliver. What, I, I can't remember his first, uh, first name. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up, Dad, and I'll put it on the, on the notes for this episode. Yes, yes. Oliver. He's very good on, on Scotland, on, on historical things, on Culloden and, you know... He's very good on history, but so, he's also good on prehistory. So you, you're feeling you're, you're building competence and interest and knowledge. Yes, yes. And Manel has just come back from a little bit of shopping and a walk. So, hola, marido. Hello. Hello. We're just. Hello. Have you got some nice shopping? Anything I could like to share yeah, in? Yeah, <laughs> I could. I could do a swap because I got. 27 tins of soup. Oh, I'm not sure you should confess to that, Dad, but I think I think that's just your... Um, it's not a case of you um, hoarding or panic no, buying. It's, it's just bought over the time, you know, you, when you say three, four for the price of three, you know, you get them and you think, oh, well, that's, that's good. Right. I'll let you off. And also, thinking about competence, you were talking about making bread. Yes, I would love to make bread again. I would... I I used to keep a log and a, and a picture like you of what I'd made. Right. Bread. And uh, because there is a bread maker back in our family, my great, great, great grandfather, uh -huh. William McIntosh, was a baker in Edinburgh. Right. Right. And he somehow got unemployed. Now, I can't imagine a baker being unemployed. I mean, he was a master baker. He got unemployed mm -hmm. and and he got depressed. And he actually was admitted into an asylum. So, mm. I'm, I'm related to somebody who was in an asylum. How about that? Blimey. <laughs> anyway, he did die, but his, his wife came down to Newcastle uh -huh. in... 1840-odd, with two children, and hence me living in the northeast. Wow. How about that? Brilliant. And that's, that's why I got the, the interest in baking. Right. Well, uh, you know, I baked a loaf yesterday, I think. So let's, yeah. let's see if we can arrange maybe through Rebecca or Jane to get you some flour and some yeast. Yes. And then we can have a bake-off. Uh, a teaching session. Yeah, and a, and a competition, man. Yeah. As a that was a problem I used to, I used to like it so much that that, that uh, particularly putting butter on the bread yeah. and started putting on weight, which I thought was wasn't very wise. Yeah, it'll make a make a change from fart competitions. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say, Dad, thank you so much for joining me on this. Sure, I, I hope I've contributed uh, to the standard that you wish. Oh, of course, of course. And you've really role modelled the A, B and C for us of, yeah. of what we can do for our own well-being and personal growth in these really crazy times. So thanks, Dad. That's a pleasure. Right. God bless to all your readers. Thank you. And, and our listeners, Dad, as well. Yes, listeners, yes. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. You don't need to go, Dad. Dad. Pea Supers, that's it in the bag. Thanks to my very own Big G. Thanks, Dad, for taking part. Pea Supers, I know you'll have your own examples. Share them and I'll put them on the show notes for this episode. It might inspire someone else and really brings to life our value of connection and collaboration. And remember, this is about small steps, so... However tiny and daft it may seem, please do share it. If you like this episode or the podcast, 
Could I invite you to share it with one other person? I'm really keen to spread the behavioural science and skills with more people. Of course, a subscription, rating or review are also very much appreciated. If you'd like a People Soup bookmark to keep track of all those books you'll be reading, please do drop me a message, either via social media or our Gmail, and wherever you are in the world, I'll pop a couple in the post. The show notes are at rossmackintosh.co.uk and this includes links to a few different platforms. You can get in touch at peoplesoup.pod at gmail.com On Twitter, we're at peoplesouppod On Instagram, we're at people.soup and on Facebook, we are at peoplesouppod Thanks to Andy Glenn for his spoon magic and to you for listening. Thanks for being part of this community of pea soupers. Have a good week, take care of yourself and each other, and bye for now. Uh, Hello? Hi, Dad, me again. Yeah? How are you doing?